Hello there everybody and welcome to the Mr. Sin channel. In this video, we're going to be going over total SIGs. This is what every single map needs to be an effective map for you and I to be able to understand it. So stick around as we figure out exactly what total SIG stands for. So while watching this video, make sure to use the guided notes. You can find the guided notes in the description below. They'll go along with the video and it'll help you better understand exactly what we're talking about and help you remember. Now, we're gonna be talking about total SIGs. Total SIGs is an acronym and what it stands for is all the different components that a map needs. Now, there are some parts of total SIGs that not every single map will have, but we'll get to that in a little bit. Total SIG stands for title, orientation, date, author, legend, scale, index, grid, and source. If you have all of these things, then you will have a complete map and you will be able to make sure that your reader understands everything that's going on with the map. So let's break down each part of total SIGs now. The first part of total SIGs is the title. Now this is pretty simple. Really the goal of the title is to make sure that the reader knows exactly what they're looking at. You wanna title the map so that way it's very clear right away what is being presented on this map. Maps get used for a variety of reasons and especially in human geography, we're gonna be looking at a lot of data on top of maps and layering and all this different stuff. So the title of the map will be very useful so we know right away what we're looking at. The next part of Total SIGs is orientation. Orientation is gonna help us with the directions. This helps the reader understand exactly what's going on. We're also, with orientation, going to have the compass rows. This is where we'll be able to see where's north, where's south, where's east, where's west. So that is the compass rows, and this is normally how we're able to tell the orientation of the map. That way we know exactly what direction is what on the map. Remember, maps are a 2D surface. We're looking at something that's flat, and most of the time, we are looking at maps that are trying to convey a three-dimensional shape on this two-dimensional shape. So it's important to have our orientation so we know exactly what's going on. The next part of our total SIGs is the date. Now again, this one seems kind of simple, but this is a really important piece of information. The date's really important because this lets us know when the map was produced. Now, over time, things change. If you were looking at a map of the United States, it would look very different if we were looking at the 1700s instead of current day. It would be important to know when that map was produced so you know how up to date and how current it is. If we're looking at an older map but we think that it's current day, we might get misinformation and we might not understand that this is now out of date and we need to get a more updated version to really understand what's going on currently. The next part of Total SIGs is the author. This just lets us know who produced the map. It gives credit to the person who created it and it can also let us know possibly about the reliability of the map and we could even look for other maps that have been created by this author. I mean, think about this so far. We've talked about title, we've talked about orientation, date, and author. Three of those, if this helps you remember, are things that you put on every single paper you create at school. You probably don't put orientation, but title, date, and author, you do. So these are things that are just basic information that's really important for us to understand. The next part of our total SIGs is legend. Now the legend is really important. This is our key. It's gonna let us know what all the different colors mean, what the shapes mean, any information that's on the map that uses a symbol, a color, or anything like that, the legend will let us know exactly what that is. And this will be really important in our class because we're going to be looking at a lot of different maps that present data. And the data will be colored, it'll be in different shapes and sizes. And so we'll have to rely on the legend to fully understand exactly what's being presented to us. And that way we can interpret everything correctly and we won't have some miscommunication there. So the legend again is the key that'll explain what is happening on the map. Up next we have scale and scale is really important for us as well to understand because this is going to show us the relationship between what's on the map and in the real world. We'll be able to see the right sizes and distance by using scale correctly. And scale can be presented in a variety of ways, actually three ways. The first one is a number, a ratio that we would get. So you might see some maps that'll have like a 1 to 25,000. What this means is every one unit on the map equals 25,000 units on the world. So if we're looking at feet, well one there to 25,000 feet would mean that every one unit on our map would equal 25,000 feet in real life. 
The other ways that we can see scale is in a written way, where it's described with words. We also have the third way, which would then be actually a bar line, where we'd be able to see the two distances on the math represented by a bar. You'd be able to actually measure it with a ruler, and you'd be able to compare that then to the Earth's surface. So these are the three different ways that we have scale and how it's presented on maps to help us understand the relationship of what's being presented on the map with what's actually happening on Earth. The next part of total sigs is the part that isn't on every map. And that's gonna be our index and grid. And these two actually work together. Now, a lot of maps will have a grid. When we're looking at a map of the world, the grid is gonna be longitude and latitude. You're going to be able to see A1, and I'll be able to move to that exact point. Lots of maps use grids. Even if you're playing games like Fortnite, where you'll be able to see, I'm gonna go into this point and it's at B2. You'll be able to fly right in there. Now, index is going to be connected to the grid. The index will say where things are on the grid. Think about like a mall map. Now, these are starting to become outdated, and so some of you maybe not even getting this reference, but I'll have a picture, don't worry, so you can understand what I'm saying. Malls used to use kind of the grid system, and then all of the information was on the index. The reason why is you couldn't put all the store names on the map. It would look clunky, and it'd be hard for the reader to understand what's being presented. So they would have the map above, and then underneath would be an index, and you'd be able to see all the different stores, and they would have the locations of the grid. So you, that way, you would look at the index, and then you'd look up to the map to be able to see exactly where you should be going. The last part of the total SIGs is source. And really, the whole point of sources is for us to be able to understand where did the information come from. In human geography, we're going to be using maps that have layers of data on them. And we might have a map with multiple sources. This is just to make sure that we understand where the information is coming from, how much of it is from one site or another, where is the data, is it credible, is it not. So this just helps us fact check and make sure that our map that we're interpreting is correct and that we're understanding it correctly. Hopefully now you understand exactly what total SIGs is, how you can use it for maps, and what to look for to make sure you have all the information that a map needs to have so you can understand what's going on in it. I'm Mr. Sin. Thank you for stopping by today. Don't forget to subscribe so you get notifications when I post new videos, especially for human geography. And until next time, I'll see you online.